I'm Catherine O'Hare. I'm one of the co-founders of Daybreak Seaweed. I'm in Southern California and um, Daybreak Seaweed creates um, culinary seaweed products from West Coast regenerative seaweed farms. So our main line is seaweed salts, seasonings, and spice blends um, that are all made from dried milled seaweed that are easy to use like you use any other salt or seasoning. Um, and how I got into this, oh my gosh, it's been such a long twisting path. Um, I lived in Northern California in the Bay Area for a long time. And up there I got connected to a seaweed wild harvester through a friend of a friend. Um, and at the time had been working on vegetable farms and was working for a small food business. So I was, I've always been interested in food systems, um, sustainable food, and kind of like our local food system. Like how can we make our local food systems resilient? Um, and I grew up down here in Southern California by the beach. So I've always been drawn to the coast and the ocean. Um, and learning more about this community of um, folks in Northern California who wild forage seaweed, I just got really interested and um, wanted to learn more about seaweed and learn that there's a lot of native species of seaweed all along the West Coast. I mean, now really all along the coastal areas of every country. Um, and, you know, I was kind of in this world that really talked up local vegetables and local meat. And I was kind of wondering like, yeah, why aren't we talking about local seaweed? Um, and it was around that time that farms were starting on the East Coast, like Brunsmith's um, and some other really cool farms in Maine and New England. And so um, along with my co-founder, we were kind of wondering is seaweed farming happening in California? Is seaweed farming happening on the West Coast? Um, and this was back in 2016, so a while ago. So we just started talking to everyone we could and learning more about the um, landscape and the industry. And that really started me down the path of now making West Coast seaweed such a big part of my life. Awesome. Um, and so just like, for any for people who don't know anything about seaweed, um, can you talk a little bit about like why it's a sustainable uh, product, and also what uh, who you connect with, um, like who you're sourcing from to get seaweed? Yeah, so um, seaweed is this kind of catch-all phrase for any type of algae that's grown in salt water, so in marine systems. And algae, you know, there's microscopic algae, there's all types. Um, so macroalgae is what, you know, we call big pieces of algae that you can see with your eyes like seaweed. And all it takes to grow is salt water and sunlight. And, you know, it's because the salt water, our ocean water is full of nutrients. Um, so because of that alone, it's a super sustainable food. It doesn't take fresh water, like we're in a huge drought and agriculture is a huge you know, user of water for good reason. It doesn't take arable land. It doesn't take any inputs like feed or fertilizer. Um, so it's just a, a food that can be grown really sustainably, you know, and it's a very nutritious food for that, you know, for that matter. And then there's kind of this added layer that um, as our oceans absorb more carbon dioxide, they're becoming more acidic. And that's why, you know, ocean acidification is kind of this, you know, issue that's causing a lot of, a lot of problems, especially for shellfish or, or animals that have kind of shells. Um, and so by growing seaweed, and then removing it from that aquatic ecosystem, you can be kind of absorbing carbon and then removing it from the water. And we're really careful to say it doesn't sequester that carbon, like it's still, you know, that carbon is still part of the cycle. But on a local level, wherever that seaweed's grown, it can have an impact of, you know, 
improving the water quality. So that's why people use the word regenerative. It's kind of more than just sustainable. It's actually helping to improve that environment where it's grown. Awesome. Um, so since seaweed is a catch-all term for many different types of algae, um, are basically like when for your products, um, is it a mix of different like um, species of plants? Our main line, we just use one species, um, which is farmed um, in many places, but along the West Coast, and that's called um, Alaria marginata. It's often called like West Coast wakame or Alaska wakame, but we sell other species. We sell a total of, I think, four right now. Um, and so in that term seaweed, there's the kelps, which is getting a lot of recognition for being farmed right now. Those are all brown algae and they, you know, can, you see these photos, they're, they can be really, really big. And then there's green and red algae also. So green, um, like the ed an edible variety of green seaweed is sea lettuce. And then red, um, red algae is some edible types are either dulse or nori or ogo. They're kind of smaller, smaller types of seaweed. So yeah, who, who grows the seaweed that you use? So we work right now with six farmers. This year we added four of those. So as the West Coast, you know, industry kind of develops, there's more folks that we're working with. Four of our farms are in Alaska. Um, where the state is being really supportive of seaweed farming and really kind of encouraging that as a as a new like you know kind of coastal um, coastal industry so and our farms are pretty spread out um, around the state so we work with one that, that's near Ketchikan two that are in Cordova Alaska and one that's in Homer which is kind of even further around the curve um, Alaska is just a really like ideal spot to grow kelp and other types of seaweed. There's a lot of like pristine bays and, um, has a really great geography for it. And then we're talking to a few farms, um, that are onshore in Oregon and California. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of reasons why offshore seaweed farming has, um, has been slow to develop on the West Coast, um, but there's some cool folks growing seaweed onshore in tanks. Um, but yeah, we're really focused on West Coast seaweed farmers. Yeah, and when you're when you look to partner with a farmer, what kind of what do you look for? Um, well, it's such a new such a new um, industry that. At first, we were just seeing if anyone was farming seaweed on the West Coast. Um, we look for folks that are kind of, um, I mean, the good news is there's, I haven't seen a West Coast seaweed farm that's um, doing things super unsustainably. There's some that are larger scales than others. Um, and so we're um, pretty focused on supporting smaller, community focused farms. Um, we definitely look for farms that are growing the varieties that we wanna use. There's some that we just, um, some varieties that we gravitate more to. Um, and then we definitely are, it's like an open conversation with our farmers always about quality, um, food grade. There's all these kind of things that can happen that make seaweed not that ideal for human food. Um, so we're always kind of working with our farmers to, um, make sure the product is, you know, food grade and, and everything like that. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and what do you think that seaweed adds to our, our diet? Like what's, what, like what makes it a good addition? Why eat seaweed? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> um, I think the sustainability piece was, is a really big part of why Avery and I got into it. But then once, um, 
once you start using seaweed, it's a really nutritious food. So it has some nutrients that are hard to find in other vegan diets, mm -hmm. like iodine, potassium. It's, you know, kind of this, um, for not having much, you know, for being like a, a food without many calories, it still has a lot of nutrients and minerals. So it's a great, um, it's a great kind of nutrient packed food. And then um, each species kind of has its own unique flavor, but they all are adding this kind of savory umami um, quality to foods that just kind of helps enhance the, enhance all the other flavors. So adding it to sweet foods kind of helps like balance the flavors and bring out this kind of like salty um, element. And um, so yeah, it's just a really versatile ingredient for the kitchen.